Turn with me, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 5. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 5. Talking about our Lord and Savior, he's talking about his words when he was upon the face of the earth. It says, Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, this is Jesus' word, to the Father, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. But in, in contrast to that, in contrast to the sacrifice and offerings that the Father did not desire, in contrast to that, we see the words from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the Father. A body you have prepared for me. See, we want to look a few moments at the sacrifice of Jesus. The sacrifice of Jesus and what it accomplished for you and I. See, when we look at the Old Testament, there was a problem. When we look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 4, it states, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away uh, sins. See, when we look at the things in the Old Testament, they were a shadow of the true substance which was uh, to come. And thus, the priests in the Old Testament that had to continue offering sacrifices time after time, day after day, year after year, because with those sacrifices, there still was the reminder of the sin that was never actually physically atoned for. So again, when we look at Hebrews chapter, when we look at look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 5, notice what the word of God, the Old Testament says in Psalms chapter 40 verses 6 through 8. And while we're looking at this, you want to keep in mind that phrase, if you will, a body you have prepared for me. Because what God is going to uh, show us, he's going to show us the significance of that from the Old Testament and help us to understand what he's saying concerning the <coughs> sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So now when we look at Psalms chapter 40, verses 6 to 8, it says similar words to that which we found in Hebrews chapter 10, and verse number 5. It says... Notice what it says, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. That's not what God desired because it could not repair the relationship that was broken between man and God. Those sacrifices could not do that. And again, God wants to have a spiritual relationship with every soul upon the face of the earth. So it says, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. But notice this phrase. It says, my ears you have opened. That word open also means uh, dug out. It means pierced. So he's saying, my ears you have opened. My ears you have dug out. My ears you have pierced. And then notice as it continues, burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, these are the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Behold, I come in the scroll. That's the word that the Old Testament used. It means in the volume, in the scroll, in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight, the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Notice what his delight is. What his delight was when he was on the face of the earth. He says, I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law, your body of teachings is within my heart. Now, notice, 
when we go over. Notice again the underlying phrase, Psalms 40 and verse number 6, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. My ears you have dug out. My ears you have pierced. Hebrews 10, 5. Notice the similar wording. And the Holy Spirit, which inspired the total word of God, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. He tells us in the Old Testament the phrase, my ears you have opened, my ears you have pierced, my ears you have dug out. Now, what the Holy Spirit is letting us know, when we come over to the New Testament, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. But the Holy Spirit is letting us know that phrase up there means the same phrase as that here. And just stick with me for a moment. It says, but a body you've prepared for me. So what is the Holy Spirit telling us about the sacrifice, about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Notice. My ears you have opened, a body you have prepared for me, meaning the same thing. The Holy Spirit is opening up our understanding to help us to realize the significance, the importance, the impact of this phrase, a body you prepared for me, meaning my ears you have opened, my ears you have dug out, my ears you have pierced. What is the Holy Spirit letting us know? It's letting us know that Jesus Christ, doing the will of the Father, he's saying, my whole body hears you, Lord. My whole body you have pierced. My whole body you have dug out to do your will. Notice the body, Isaiah chapter 50, verses 47. The Lord has given me notice the tongue of the Lord that I should know how to speak. A word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning my morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. Notice the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord God has opened my ear. He's pierced my ear. He's dug out my ear. He's dug out a body for me to do your will. Notice he says, I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. Continuing in Isaiah 50, 4 through 7. I gave my back, notice the body, I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. Notice the body that Jesus Christ yielded up his heart, <laughs> soul, his mind, his strength, everything that he did for the will of the Father. Isaiah 50, verse number 7. The Lord will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. He had total faith in his death that he was going to perform, his perfect life, his burial, and his resurrection. He said, therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. Yes, Jesus Christ he went through a lot of physical pain. He went through a lot of physical pain. He said, I set my face. Face like flint, a flint rock is known for its hardness. Has anybody ever, some of you have, you had those oh my God moments? Mm -hmm. The pain was so excruciating in the body, and you had, uh, some of you have had those experiences. Mm -hmm. Oh my God moments. Well, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for <laughs> the salvation of you and I, so that you and I can have a relationship with the Father, He has some oh my God moments. He said, I have set my face like a flint. And notice his faith. He said, and I know that I will not be ashamed. I will not be let down. I will not be disappointed. What has the will of God done for you and I? That those sacrifices could not do? Hebrews 10, 10. By that will, by the will of the Father, by the love of God, we have been sanctified. We've been set apart so that we, those of us who have obeyed the gospel of Christ, we've been set apart so that we could have
have a relationship with God, sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, one time for all time, so that we can have a relationship with the Father. And thus, in his death, he lived a perfect life, his burial, his resurrection, Romans chapter 1 and verse number 4, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, is declared to be the Son of God with power, how? According to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. The two of them. Praise God. The sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sanctified so that we could have a spiritual relationship with God. Our body was prepared for him. And when I, Brother Jenkins, look at myself each and every day, and I compare myself with a, a Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I recognize how many times I come short of God's glory in thought, word, and deed by omission and commission, and I look at our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and realize that he thought everything that he was supposed to think about. He said everything he was supposed to say. And he did everything that he was supposed to do. And everything that he wasn't supposed to think about, he did not think about. And everything he was not supposed to say, he did not say. And everything he was not supposed to do, he did not do. And when I look at that, I have to say, thank you. I have to say, thank you, Jesus. And the question for us this morning, right mm -hmm. here, will you be sanctified? Mm -hmm. You can be sanctified today. You can be uh, set apart today by obeying the unadulterated, meaning the unchanged gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, there was one time when I was in the assembly of the, the, the Church of Christ, and so, some of y'all were there. Some of y'all here right now were there when I heard, again, the unadulterated gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I was part of the Pentecostal persuasion. That's the persuasion I was part of. That's the denomination that I was part of. The Pentecostal persuasion. So I'm sitting in the assembly, and y'all remember uh, Brother Harris was preaching mm -hmm. at, at that time. And I, I, I remember Sister Gordon was there. Okay? I remember that. Others of y'all remember also. I'm not going to tell y'all how long ago that was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But anyway, I was sitting in the Church of Christ assembly, and I thought I was saved. I was part of the Pentecostal persuasion. And I, I heard things that I had never heard before. Not one church. And about how Jesus purchased the church with his blood. Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. And how we see in Matthew 16, 18, and 19, that Jesus said, Upon this rock, and that rock being his son, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 4, he is the foundation, not Peter. He said, Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it, it being one. So I heard all those things, and I'm sitting in the assembly, part of the Pentecostal persuasion, and I said to myself, I know I'm saying. That's what I said. I, I, I know I'm in the right church. So I, I didn't argue with anybody. I didn't reason with anybody. I didn't ask anybody any questions. After I heard the sermon, I went to the back, and I took the tracks off the back. And I took the tracks home with my Bible, and I studied for myself. And I saw that what the preacher, Phil Harris, was preaching, was that it was right in the book. It, it, it was right there. And I, I remember, I, I remember it clear as day. I remember where the address was. Okay, I remember what happened. And, it was, and I remember the verse, too, in Acts chapter 22. And you can check it when you want to. Acts chapter 22, verse number 16. That's 
the verse that I obey the unadulterated gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I remember this sermon as clear as day. And when he's preaching in the sermon, the word is clicking out. I knew he was talking to me. And everything just started disappearing to me. And thus being sanctified to have a relationship with God. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, first Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. You have to hear about the life, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith it's impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the reward of them that generally seeks him. You have to have a change of mind. This is what the word of God is about, a change of mind. And you want to understand that God loves you. He loves you tremendously. He loves you more than you can imagine. And he wants you to come to the knowledge of the truth because it's the truth that's going to make you free. St. John chapter 8 and verse number 32. The Lord, the devil, excuse me, the devil does not want you to believe the truth. He, he, he would have had me sit right there and think that I'm saved when I was believing man-made traditions, man-made religion. He would have been so happy. And that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to believe that you're saved. Now, God loves you. And he wants you to come to the knowledge of the truth because that's what's going to set you free. So your mind has to change. Okay. Then you have to make that confession. Yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then be baptized into Christ. He'll add you to his church, Acts 2, 41 and 47. The church that you read about in his word. And then after being baptized, be faithful unto the Lord. Today can be your day as we stay in the same space. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so.